Hello everybody, welcome to today's Ocean Wonders video. So today we are going to be learning about a really interesting animal called the killer whale. So what exactly is a killer whale? So killer whales are actually the world's largest species of dolphin, not actually whales as we think. Dolphins and whales are marine mammals. They belong to a group called cetaceans. I'll say it again, cetaceans. They're very well adapted to life underwater, but they still need to breathe air. So they actually have lungs like us, not like fish who have gills. And whales and dolphins breathe through a blowhole on the top of their head. And this is basically like our nostrils. Killer whales got their name because they actually hunt other whales sometimes, such as grey whales. They go after injured whales or young calves. Killer whales are also known by their scientific name, orca, and I'll be using both the term orca and the term killer whale throughout this presentation. So what do killer whales look like? Well, they're one of the easiest species of cetacean to identify. They have very distinctive black and white markings. The white streak above their mouth is actually not their eye. The eye is much smaller and more difficult to see. It blends in on the black. There are several different types of killer whale and these are called ecotypes. They vary in size, markings and culture, what they eat and where they live. Male killer whales have larger fins and flippers than females, so that's the easiest way to tell them apart. And they can reach nine meters in length and weigh up to 10,000 kilograms. So that's about the same as five or six cars or 15 cows. And where do killer whales live? Well, killer whales are found in all of the world's oceans, but the majority of them are found in colder waters at the North Pole in the Arctic and at the South Pole in the Antarctic. They have a thick layer of fat called blubber, which helps to keep them warm in icy seas. Some populations spend most of their time near the coast, while others live far out in the open ocean. These are the different type of ecotypes that we were talking about a minute ago. And what do you think killer whales eat? Well, killer whales are at the very top of the marine food chain, and they're one of the largest predators or hunters on the entire planet. They eat a wide variety of food. So some populations only eat fish, like salmon, for example, while other groups hunt seals, sea lions, penguins, squid, sharks, and even, as we mentioned earlier on, young whales. So killer whales are very sophisticated, intelligent, social animals. They live in groups called pods of up to 20 individuals, all from the same extended family. They communicate through clicks, whistles and sound pulses, and this helps them to stay in touch over long distances in dark water. Each orca population has its own culture. They have hunting strategies, behaviours and vocalisations or calls that are specific to their group that have developed over generations. So different killer whale groups will have slightly different calls and vocalisations to those in a different area. Female killer whales can live to be up to 80 years old. And old female killer whales are actually very, very important in killer whale society. They play a very important role in teaching and protecting the younger whales in the pod and passing on all of their knowledge. So their high intelligence makes orcas very efficient hunters. They work closely together and use elaborate strategic hunting techniques to catch their prey. They'll work together as a team and they can herd their prey into shallow water so that it can't escape. Or they might even swim very fast to create a wave and use this to knock their prey off whatever it's on. For example, if a seal is sitting on a piece of ice, the killer whales will create a wave and the seal will be knocked off. It's very clever um, and very much ties into their teamwork and their close-knit family group. So killer whales can swim at speeds of up to 54 kilometers per hour, and they can travel up to 160 kilometers in a day looking for food and socializing. That's about the same distance as Dublin to Waterford or Galway to Sligo. 
So like other dolphins, killer whales can use echolocation to locate their prey. The killer whale sends out a series of clicking sounds called a click train from a special organ in its head called the melon. These sounds travel through the water and bounce off any objects they hit. So that might be a seal or it might be a shoal of fish, for example. The echo tells the killer whale about the size and shape of the object. So they know if there are any prey ahead or they might know if it's just a wall ahead or a boat. Orcas can use echolocation to detect prey 150 meters away. So that's much farther than they'd actually be able to see underwater. Can you think of any other animals that use echolocation? So even though killer whales are top of the food chain, unfortunately, there are a lot of threats to these beautiful animals. So in some parts of the world, orcas are still hunted by humans for their meat. And as well as that, some killer whales are kept in captivity in sea parks and large aquariums around the world. Some of these whales would have been captured in the wilds maybe 10, 20, 30 or 40 years ago. And other ones would have been bred in captivity and have never known a life in the wild. Marine parks don't have the space for whales to live a healthy and happy life because these whales are used to living in their family groups and traveling large distances each day. So it's very harmful to the whales to be living um, in a marine park. So I would encourage you not to go to um, a marine park that keeps whales in the future. So unfortunately, like all of the other ocean life, killer whales are very vulnerable to plastic pollution and chemical pollution in our oceans. So the animals that killer whales are feeding on, things like seals, penguins, fish, if they are taking in plastic in their diet, then the killer whale is getting even more plastic into its diet when it's eating them. This can lead to a buildup of toxic chemicals in the killer whale's body, and it can make them ill and even cause them to die. So plastic pollution is a big problem for killer whale populations. Another big problem is underwater noise. So this might be caused by um, shipping or by submarines or sonar. And the underwater noise really stops the killer whales from being able to find their prey efficiently because they're not able to use their echolocation properly because there's so much other noise going on. It's also very distressing to them because they're so sensitive to sound. So we might not see them very often, but we actually do have killer whales living around the coast of Ireland. So the closest population lives off the west coast of Scotland and often travels to Irish waters when they're looking for prey. Another population lives far out in the North Atlantic, but sometimes visits around the coast of Donegal. In 2001, three killer whales swam up the River Lee into Cork City. And hundreds of people came out to see them because it was such a big surprise to see these whales come right into the heart of the city centre. You can have a look at the map below and that shows where um, killer whales have been sighted around Ireland over the years. So how can you help killer whales? Well, there's lots of things that you can do. First off, if you ever want to see a whale in real life, then the best way to do it is to join a reputable whale watching tour or boat trip. Whales are just too big, too social and too intelligent to be kept in captivity. So tempting as it might be to go see them in an aquarium or, mar or a marine park, this is really bad for the whales that are being kept there. So I would advise you against visiting a marine park or an aquarium. A great thing that you can do is you can adopt a whale through lots of different marine charities or you can fundraise for a whale conservation charity. So in Ireland, we have the Irish Whale and Dolphin Group, and they do really important research into the marine mammals around our coasts. And there's lots of other charities out there as well. You can reduce your plastic by making sure to always bring a reusable cup or a reusable bottle and trying to turn down plastic whenever you can. You can choose to only eat sustainable seafood. So you'll see there's a little sustainable seafood sign um, on any of the packaging whenever you're buying fish or seafood products. And you can take action on climate change. And there's so many ways that you could do that. You can do it by planting a tree 
or maybe a wildflower meadow or choosing to walk or cycle to school instead of taking the car whenever that's possible. You can find out lots of more tips and information on our website at greenschoolsireland.org. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the killer whale. Thanks. <laughs>